everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I have another foundation battle for you. Last month I did my first battle between two very popular, long wearing, more mid to high end foundations. One of those was the Kat Von D Locket Tattoo Foundation and the other was Estee Lauder's Double Wear. If you're interested in seeing that battle, I will link it either in the description bar or a clickable link somewhere within this frame. This month I wanted to do a drugstore battle. I know for some people a $30 $40, $60 foundation isn't accessible to them and they want to know what's good at the drugstore. So today I chose two, again, pretty popular products. One of them is the Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless. The other one is the Infallible 24 Hour from L'Oreal. Now with my channel, because I have such oily skin, you are going to find reviews and challenges um, of more oily skin friendly um, long wearing foundations because that's just more of what I personally would buy. Um, I also have mature skin so if you are a mature woman or I hate using that word but if you're someone like over 30, over 40, over 50 these will also be um, foundations that have been pre-approved by me for a more mature skin. But back to today's battle. These foundations are not entirely similar. One, the L'Oreal Pro Matte claims to be a 24 hour, whereas the Fit Me Matte and Poreless does not claim to be a long wear actually. Um, they both claim to be matte finishes, medium coverage, um, natural looking, not heavy. They also both claim to help the look of pores. So we'll see if that's true. Even though it's not comparing apples to apples because the Fit Me isn't necessarily a long wear, we'll see how well it holds up. Does it Break apart after three hours, does it break apart after six? How does it compare to the Pro Matte? So if you're someone that has been debating between these two foundations and you're just curious to see what the differences are and how they hold up throughout the day, then please keep on watching. So my face is really, really breaking out and I think I know what the culprit is now. Um, I believe it is the um, hair and nail and skin supplement I've been taking. I think it's the Nature's Bounty Hair, Skin and Nails that I've been taking for about two and a half weeks and my face is breaking out like I am 15 again. And I think that that's the cause because I did look up and saw that um, while there are arguments to refute the claim, many, many people have said that biotin does break them out. And there is no other explanation for why I am breaking out not even just in the hormonal area, but like here and here, just everywhere on my body, I am a mess. So I have stopped taking those vitamins. So basically my skin looks extra crappy today. So before I get started, I have nothing on besides a little moisturizer, SPF 15 moisturizer. I'm gonna be putting a little bit of the Benefit Professional just in my T-zone on both sides self tan this morning it's probably not that noticeable on camera but my face is a good two shades lighter than my body um, I'm not sure if these are actually going to be the right color even with me being self tanned these are the only ones I could find in my stash my drawers uh, full of makeup so this one is um, in 228 soft tan again this is the matte and poreless so I'm putting a little bit on my beauty blender just like a dot and yeah, it's a little dark, but I'll make it work just for the day, just for the purposes of this video to see how it wears. I do feel like I need to go in with another coat, so I'm adding a little bit more. That's better. I just didn't have enough on. I think the blender was soaking up too much of it. Look at that big, huge zit right there. Ugh. Now the coverage on this is very good. I would definitely say it is a medium coverage foundation. It's not covering up all of my old marks over here, but Barely any foundation does, except for the most full coverage. Um, it has a natural skin-like finish. It's not completely matte. So I do like the finish of this. It is um, not emphasizing my pores, but it's not making me look poreless either. Overall, it's okay. I'm happy with it. If this was my first time using this foundation, I would think that it's pretty good. Um, I do remember having some issues with it throughout the day, so we'll see how that goes this time. But uh, okay. So being that I have a foundation that is too dark and too yellow on this side, I have to balance it out as best I can. So the shade I'm using in the L'Oreal Pro Matte is 106 Sun Beige. Hopefully this will not necessarily match my skin, but match this side. So I'm taking a different damp beauty blender, putting it 
putting about the same amount on. Oh yeah, also too dark and too yellow, so perfect. So at least I won't have two unmatching sides. Now I have to say that I think this foundation has about the same amount of coverage when first applied. So I think it has the same amount of coverage, but it's definitely a more matte finish. So actually I take that back. I'm not really finding there to be much of a difference in the finishes of these two at all. They're both matte, but not like flat matte. They're, to me, they're pretty skin-like. I think they both give good coverage. Neither one feels like a mask. I don't think either one looks like a mask, except for the fact that it's maybe a little bit the wrong color. Um, my pores don't look perfect. So I'm gonna leave that to my powder, which I think I'm gonna go use my Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Powder because that one really truly does make your pores disappear and your skin look flawless. Unfortunately, it doesn't have much by way of oil control. That's my only gripe about it. But um, I have to powder any foundation I use down because I am so oily. So just to recap, I used a little bit of the Porefessional through the T-Zone, the Benefit Porefessional, as my primer. And then I put the Maybelline Fit Me on this, the left side, for my left side. And then on my right side, I have the Infallible Pro Matte. It is currently 9.30 a.m. I'm going to check back with you probably around 12.30, 3.30. 6.30, we'll see how the day goes, and I'll see you very soon. So I thought that it might be a good idea to also show you what it looks like, what both foundations look like, right after I finish my makeup. So what you just saw, my application was about five or 10 minutes ago. I went upstairs and I put on my powder and my concealer and blush, contour, highlight, lips, all that stuff. So this is by a window, and this is the um, Maybelline side, and then this is the L'Oreal Pro Matte side in natural light. So actually the color doesn't look that bad. It looked pretty bad downstairs. So I will check in with you guys in a few okay, hours. so it is now a little after one o'clock in the afternoon. This makeup has been on for about three and a half hours. And as of right now, they are both pretty equal. I would give them an equal grade. Um, I'm shiny on both sides. I think in this camera, this side is, no, this side is actually looking better than this side. But when I just looked in my bathroom mirror, um, I actually liked the look of this Fit Me side better. This one actually looked a little bit more makeup-y to me, like I could definitely see it when I looked in the mirror, whereas this one looked more skin-like, like it was melted into my skin. Not that it like disappeared, because that kind of sounds like it just was gone, but no, it looked more skin-like, whereas this one looked more um, makeup-y, for lack of a better word. So they both have broken up around my nostrils, but that is... Typical, most foundations do that on me. So I'm actually surprised how much I like this Maybelline Fit Me side, because I'm trying to remember when the last time I wore it was, and I'm thinking it was probably like right around the time that it came out. So like a year, more or less, I'm not really sure when it came out, but I remember not liking it that much, but I don't remember why. I thought maybe it was because it just made me oily and the wear time wasn't good, but so far after three and a half hours, I think it's holding up pretty nicely and it definitely is holding its own against the Pro Matte. So let's check in again in a few more hours. Hey guys, now it is around five o'clock, a little bit before 5 p.m. and I decided to come into one of my guest bathrooms for this check-in, change the lighting a little bit, see if this makes any difference. I've just been looking in the mirror in front of me and trying to see what kind of differences I see in the foundation. Um, overall, I think now the um, Pro Matte side looks better. I'm definitely more oily on the side of the Maybelline. Um, this zit has like really come through for sure, which I'm not liking, but yeah, overall I feel very oily on the Fit Me side. Um, this one, I still see the makeup a little bit more. This one, it's reminding me of why I stopped using it because I just feel very oily with it. So that's it for this check-in. I will do one more before bed and give you my final thoughts. Hey you guys, it is now a little past 9 p.m. So I've had both of these foundations on for almost 12 full hours. 
Now, I have not powdered all day long, which I normally would never do. I usually powder at least two times during the day. Obviously, I do need to powder, but I really wanted to let you guys see, because both of these foundations claim to be matte finishes, not necessarily oil controlling, but I just wanted you guys to see what it looks like after this amount of time, how oily I am also. For those of you who may have questioned how oily I really am because I'm always saying that I'm oily and I know some of you are probably thinking, is she really as oily as she says she is? I mean, look at this. I am definitely an oil slick. Now, earlier I said that I felt like this side was oilier and now I'm pretty much equally as oily on both sides. I also said earlier that I felt like the pro matte side didn't look as good. It looked more makeup-y, whereas this one looked more skin-like. I still feel that way. Even Like now, this side, when I looked closely in a mirror, looked awful. My pores look so huge. Again, I don't know if it's reading on the iPhone camera, but in person, or at least in my mirror, my pores look so big. I do not like the way this side looks at all. So before I announce which foundation is the winner of this battle, I just wanna address the way I look right now. You know, when I first started YouTube, I thought that I had to look perfect all the time, that my hair had to be perfect, my makeup had to be perfect, the outfit had to be perfect. And if you know me at all, you know I love to glam, but this is reality too. This is how I look most nights. I'm in a t-shirt, sweats, uh, this is this eye makeup is coming off in about three minutes as soon as this video is over. My hair is actually in a scrunchie, so this is my reality most of the time. And I feel like I'm comfortable enough with you guys to let you see me this way. And so the winner of this foundation battle, and this might surprise you, is the Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless. I know I said in the last check-in that I felt really greasy, but you know what? It looks better on my skin, it definitely makes my pores more refined and look better. It's held up really well. Even though it doesn't claim to be a long wearing foundation, it has held up just as well, if not better, than the Pro Matte. And I think that for someone who is maybe not as oily as me, but if you're just someone who's like normal, oily, moderately oily, this would be a great foundation for you. I would recommend it actually over the L'Oreal Pro Matte because as I've said probably 10 times during this video, it just looks a little makeup-y, even though I apply them the exact same way. Right now, it's shiny, it's disappearing in a lot of areas, and my pores look awful. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this second foundation battle, drugstore edition. If you found it helpful, please give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more content at least twice a week I try to upload. You can also follow me on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and Facebook. All of those are Risa Does Makeup. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys very soon.